These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. The basic setup for NMR is that we have a fixed radio frequency. Uh, fixed radio frequency. And it turns out that it's possible for nucleuses to absorb radio waves. It's possible for nucleuses to absorb radio waves. So we're going to shoot radio waves at the sample and we're going to see when the radio waves are absorbed. Now, after we fix the radio frequency, we change an external magnetic field. We change an external magnetic field and it turns out that when the magnetic field is at the right level, that will uh, allow the nucleuses to absorb the radio frequency. So the radio frequency can only be absorbed when the magnetic field is at the correct level. So these two things have to be at the right level together. When we have the correct magnetic field, then the nucleus can absorb the radio frequency. Our basic idea again <coughs> is that when the magnetic field is at the right level, it will allow the nucleus to absorb the radio frequency, and we'll be able to see that absorption. Now, the whole point here is this is supposed to be a method for deducing the structure of the molecule. So, for example, when you're reading the textbook or you're watching a lecture, we always just draw the structure of the molecule. But as you know from doing lab, you can't just take your beaker or your flask and look at it and see that structure, because obviously it's microscopic. So how do the chemists know the structures in the first place that they, they draw in the textbooks? And the answer is, one of the major tools they use is spectroscopy to figure out clues about the structure. So this is like almost kind of a detective game where you have to put the various clues together, or like a jigsaw puzzle, where you have to put the various clues together to figure out what the structure might be. Well, one big clue is what the magnetic field has to be in order for the nucleus to absorb the radio waves. And the reason that this is a clue is different nucleuses, nucleuses in different environments will absorb at different levels of magnetic field. So if you can see what the level of the magnetic field has to be to get the absorption, that's a clue as to what the environment of those nucleuses is. Now what you generally do is you start with a very low magnetic field and you start increasing it more and more, and then since you have uh, different nucleuses in the molecule, you'll get different absorptions at different fields. You'll get different absorptions, you get a whole pattern of absorptions there, and those are your clues. Then you end up with a computer printout that looks like this. And it'll have peaks on it, and the peaks are telling you where the absorptions were. The peaks are telling you where the magnetic field was absorbed. And here we have a horizontal axis. Now, one way to uh, interpret this axis is the peaks down here were absorbed at a low magnetic field. and the peaks on the right were absorbed at a high magnetic field. Therefore, the left-hand side is often called downfield, and the right-hand side is often called upfield, because this is a low magnetic field absorption and this is a high magnetic field absorption. However, confusingly, there's a whole other way of referring to this where we put the number zero on the right-hand side. And another, the way that these, the position on the horizontal axis is usually indicated, so for, and we can be talking here about proton and MR. For proton and MR, the scale basically goes from zero to 12. For proton MR, the scale is from 0 to 12, 
And these numbers here are called the deltas, or the symbol is delta for chemical shift. For example, you might be report, uh, we might report that this peak has a delta of 4, and that would mean it has a chemical shift of 4. And this doesn't tell you the magnetic fields directly. It turns out to be convenient, instead of focusing on the magnetic fields directly, to focus on how far we are from this right-hand border, how far we are from the right-hand border. That's the delta or the chemical shift. And the units for the delta are ppm, which is parts per million. For example, this would be 4 ppm, which is 4 parts per million. There's a way to explain why those are reasonable units, but that's probably not the best use of our time for a crash course in NMR. So we'll just memorize that these are the units here. The main thing we want to know is how to use this uh, to deduce structure. So we'll just memorize that the chemical shift, chemical shift increases from right to left. The symbol is delta, and the units are ppm for parts per million. So confusingly, we can see that if you have a large chemical shift, you're actually absorbing at a low magnetic field, downfield. And if you have a small chemical shift, that's been defined for an absorption at a high magnetic field, which is upfield. We should also talk about what proton NMR stands for. Do you know what the N, the M, and the R stand for? Nuclear magnetic resonance. Nuclear magnetic resonance. Good. Why is it called nuclear? Because remember, it's the nucleuses that are absorbing the magnetic fields. It's nuclear because the nucleuses are absorbing the fields. Why is it called magnetic? Because we adjust the magnetic field to get the absorptions of the radio waves. And resonance is another word for an absorption. So this would be considered a resonance, this would be considered a resonance, and this is a resonance. The, resonance are the resonances are the peaks or the absorption. We can start by talking about proton NMR, which is when the hydrogens or the proton nucleuses are absorbing. There's also carbon-13 NMR, but this is usually more important, so we might start by focusing on this. So I guess we can say that there are four different types of clues in the proton NMR, four different types of clues, and the first clue is just the number of peaks, and that's that business about equivalent hydrogens. That tells you how many peaks you're going to get. 